Uh, a couple years ago, uh, I was uh, in the Philippines, and uh, Hannah, uh, who's now my wife, took me up to meet her dad. And uh, I walked in to this house, which is way up in the mountains. Uh, and uh, then we started to talk. We started. Um, we both had like a common love of building and of making. Um, and uh, Fred Leongaren, uh had been following D Lab uh, from basically. If you go straight down here, I really thought uh, I'm a fish out of water. I was telling math. <laughs> or an, uh, a bird out of air. But I didn't realize that I have kindred spirit here. My love for building things. And my talk is about uh, the Filipino way of uh, making do with what is there. Just, just uh, be creative about what is there. And so I'd like to share some of my, my experience with you. Um, this is what I do as a painter. Uh, I do performance art to somehow um, afflict the comfortable or, you know, um, conscientize the powerful. And, but I always see myself as one who serves the unimpressive and the underdog. So this is what I do as a concerned artist when the National Artists of the Philippines uh, award to deserving artists was overruled by a presidential desire to grant its favorite. So we, we protested and I did a performance which was actually a uh, um, a protest, a form of protest. So this is what I do, one of the things I do. And as a painter, I, I do watercolors, as well as as an abstractionist, I do designs. So that's what I do, uh, partly. But <laughs> now, among other things, a proud grandfather. Uh, <laughs> The biggest one is in Luzon. This was first developed, and so, but there was a conflict between the landlords and and the tenants. So there was a, land, a, a tenancy problem here to a point where in the 50s, in the 50s, there was a government move to give free land to Mindanao, this, uh, which is largely Muslim, Muslim uh, tribe. And they were giving away lands. So the area was at the tip of the, the island called Mindanao. And they were giving away free land. <coughs> My father decided to to go for it, and we were able to uh, get a homestead for, for free, except that supplies don't come regularly. So we have to make do with uh, making our own roads, everything that needed to be, that we need to do to, to the farm. Eventually, I saw that it's possible to just help yourself and getting things uh, that is available and um, functioning them. So, so as, an arts, uh, as an art practitioner in the Philippines, um, art materials are hard to come by. And if they ever come by, they, they're expensive. So, so I started uh, fashioning out of this, like a, a grinder for me is so useful in shaping things. And but the the you're familiar, I mean, with, with that thing there. It, I put it on a drill press, so I am able to. So uh, and 
there it is. Um, again, my the tools that I fashion for painting, some of them, na, uh, not all are for painting, but mostly they are for a painter's uh, uh, tools. Ah. <coughs> Of recent interest to me is the threat to there's a there's a big big problem with uh, uh, we are largely uh, um, what you call uh, the country is in the equator and it's tropical tropical. Uh, um, we only have dry and uh, and rainy season, right? I mean, you've been there for three years. So, so through the years, um, our trees have been depleted to about 10% remaining. So that really causes flooding and, uh, and a lot of our resource is dependent on the trees, especially the small, um, Fishermen, the who live, the, who live in along the coast. Not only does it uh, swamp the lowlands, but it also uh, take away the re richness of the, the the soil. So I thought that uh, what would could be an alternative to making um, uh, fishermen's uh, boats which normally comes from uh, wooden dugouts and, and the wood, uh, the trees are no longer available. Our state presently is in advanced desertification. Uh, lots of flooding down the lowlands and so forth. And so ferrocement became my interest and I became obsessed with it. That's My first attempt at a stocko uh, mortar sprayer. <laughs> Very simple. You get a can of uh, thinner can, a turpentine can. It even says USA. <laughs> <laughs> Does that compressed air? Yeah, compressed air with. Uh, uh, air uh, sprayer, yeah. So, wow. Ah, yeah. So it, I, so further application. Uh, 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 there are a lot of uh, antique churches in the Philippines, and I came by one wall that was uh, broken. And I was, I was surprised that the early reinforcement was out of uh, bamboo. And so I, out of that, I thought of why not um, use bamboo for uh, uh, panels, uh, concrete panels. So, so and I, I had walled in with these panels. How long is that well enough? Pardon? How long is that well enough? Oh, well, it takes some some processing because we have to dry up the the bamboo. But the wall is has been there for four years. Uh, cool. It's, it's, uh -oh. it's a it's a it's a fence in our in our mm -hmm. property. He made he made those slabs for the fence in our property. Hmm. How big are those slabs, Fred? Yes, loud. How, how long? Uh, the, the, the standard uh, between, oh, this is about 12 feet. Wow. 12 feet. Okay. Yes. And I, was, uh, I was amazed at how the, the bamboo became, made it rigid because uh, uh, we, it took some time for us to discover that a bamboo has a, a flexion it, and 
but we we somehow were able to if you in uh, um, alternate, alternate the the uh, the two bamboos this way and that way, then it becomes rigid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alternate. Okay, so in the in the photo above there, every other one curves in the different direction. Yes. Okay. So yes. that's so over time it won't it won't. Okay. Right. I mean it's in woven in yeah, and out. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. Over at Penland, they were making kayak and canoes yeah. out of bamboo. Yeah. Ah, so part of my part of my desire to really um, address the future uh, scarcity, especially um, energy, I became interested in pedal power. So I thought that. Uh, a flighty, uh, even small kids could probably uh, uh, help in the farm uh, chores. So, uh, okay. the, the application of the flywheel, it has multiple applications, but this one is applied for shredding a vegetable. For, for composting. How did you cast that wheel? <coughs> How did you cast the cement wheel? Oh, okay. It, it actually is a, what do you call it? A automotive uh, rim. And then we cast it on a, a flat, uh, flat floor and pour cement on it. But we had uh, rims, uh, what do you call it? Stop. Like Spokes. in a bicycle, what do you call the Spokes. radio? Spokes. The what? Spokes. 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 Yeah. We got uh, metal spokes out, out there. And so it's not perfect, but, but it does the job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, because you used a car rim, were you also able to use a car axle, car bearings, things like that? Or how, how did you support that big oh, wheel? Oh, uh, we use pillow blocks. Okay, 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 pillow blocks. Otherwise, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, available surplus uh, bearing, okay. but I cannot find one, so I just... Before that. <laughs> In conclusion. <laughs> In conclusion, I believe that Arimuhan is going to save the country from the impending, I say impending because few the advanced desertification of the country. We are down to less than 10% forest cover. And since it is uh, when monsoon rain comes, it just swamps the lowlands with erosion and even swamp the marine life. So we're really getting there. And I believe that uh, with innovative, creative approaches to making do, uh, we can fashion something out of alternative material. And here is one uh, addressing the problem of the small uh, fisherman. Uh, out of a wooden cradle that I cemented with a Istoko uh, mortar sprayer, this is the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, if you all have any questions for Fred on, uh, you know, anything he spoke about on what it's like to make stuff in the Philippines. Oh, away. I forgot about Amy and my introduction to d -Lab. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, how did you find out? Oh yeah, okay. I was just searching on appropriate technology <laughs> and I, I wonder uh, towards what. Uh, it led me to a link like uh, the MacArthur and the first woman awardee of MacArthur. And I said, she's something. So I, I followed, and she was uh, she was a Peace Corps volunteer in Botswana. And how did she? I thought I said I thought that uh, people from MIT would address the avant-garde, uh, the the forward uh, technology. But here is one that preferred to uh, choose appropriate technology, and I learned. That she 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 developed art for the poor and the underdog in uh, as a, they spent his father was also from MIT and uh, spent one year in Calcutta so and I, fo I keep following her until she the talk in TED so. <laughs> and my dad is a girl crush. <laughs> 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 and I would not have imagined that I would have uh, this link. I would not have imagined that Alex would have been my link to Amy Smith. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and the D lab. And I, I love the D, the triple D uh, <coughs> development, design, and dissemination. Just we roll out. Oh, As I say, we roll out a new D every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very interested to hear you talk more about your um, performance work yeah. and your social action work and how you link that to making things and social change. And, oh, okay. Um, I didn't see a lot of your performance work here as a former performance artist and working in the avant-garde. Whose laptop is that? From AS220? Is that? Uh, it's, it's not Fred's. I thought maybe Fred had performed there. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Tomorrow. That? Not yet. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tell you about my story. Okay. I was, I was, I went to college in the 60s mm -hmm. and my country was the the base whereby bombers were bombing napalm and uh, orange uh, um, thing in Vietnam. I used to hear your John Bias, the call for, for peace. And so as a student activist, I hated American policy in my area. Because I saw the military bases as used as a as a launching pad to to uh, do this. So I became an activist and almost went up the mountain as a rebel. But it was an American too who convinced me that that was not it. Uh, and we were engaging some of my fellow activists to debates like you may have changed the system but it takes a more revolutionary act to change the human heart and so he pushed me that way and I became an artist and that's why the reason I was attracted to Amy was her heart as a peaceful volunteer in Botswana, choosing to do appropriate technology for the bottom billion. So in a way, and I believe that in the coming years that the Philippines, we are a small nation, but very fertile. Um, 
um, o, o, o overseas workers up and down. Uh, you know, we we yeah. feel a lot of people <laughs> because we, uh, the resources back home is really getting smaller and smaller. So um, you were you mentioned okay. Uh, you said uh, the performance art, and I came by. I used to be as an artist uh, removed or far engaged from my social milieu. I was an abstract expressionist, just expressing my inner feeling. But then eventually, I saw I saw how hard it was to just keep a family uh, uh, viable and sustainable. And I was lucky, one of the few that went to college. My parents, in fact, started my name. It's a unique name because when he learned how to write, that's how he wrote his name. And there's no other name like mine because when he learned how to write it, that's how he wrote it. It came from the word Lianguri, <coughs> L-L-A-N-G-O-R-I-N. But he, he made the mistake, and all his papers are in that name. So I followed him, and my daughter followed us. Uh, so there are only a few of us that, by that name. Two more other people. <laughs> we invented the name. <coughs> <laughs> so eventually, though, when I, I when I was convinced that there's a way, an alternative way, uh, rather than fight the system, I said, why not leave it, leave leave something that is an alternative to? <coughs> there are models, ejemplo, we call it, ejemplo, and uh, so like there's a lot of people, like NGO, <coughs> NGOs, uh, I'm glad that uh, D-Lab is, uh, is having a project in Southern Mindanao. Yeah, that, that's going to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's Northern Mindanao, though. It's, it's, it's up here. Yeah, yeah. Sorigao. Yeah. 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 yeah, just just north. Yeah. yeah. I want to be in. <laughs> I, want I want to be so in. <laughs> yeah, because... Because I'd like to, there's a lot of experience about, uh, like, like for instance, the, the terraces, the plant terraces, uh, is not as popular as it is in ASEAN, the neighboring, it was the UN, UN people who sent technologies, uh, agricultural technologies, <laughs> to learn from our experience, and yet it is not popularized in the country itself. Open, and only 40% lowland. So, so all the more that this technology should uh, should have been popularized, but it's not. Uh, government is not interested. In, uh, the people that have the resource and could make the right policies are not listening. So, it takes the NGOs. Uh, people like you. So, uh, performance. I use it to highlight some of the issues, especially uh, on corruption. On, uh, it's effective. Because we are a people that love drama. <laughs> so, so, I use it. I wish I have a, he, he recently made a huge big head out of resin and um, that uh, he performed recently in front of, I'm not sure, <coughs> the university, right? Yeah. And it's a call to action because recently we had this um, pork barrel scam, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you want to explain it? <coughs> yeah. Okay, uh, congressmen uh, are alluded, uh, they are given allowances for their projects. Uh, so, but uh, there's collusion with NGOs who are supposed to receive the 
the money, <coughs> but they were ghost uh, project. So, and and billions have been wasted. So it became a scam, a big big scam. So, so the the tagline was uh, instead of instead of uh, um, <coughs> let me. It's a call to action whereby why are things out of out of the way? Um, Hulu is the plum line, so I, I I used it as a symbol for for um, for right things or or. Uh, and so, anything that is out of line is is a leaning uh, foundation. So, I enumerated where where it comes, and mostly out of uh, uh, corruption and collusion and so forth and so on. But it was in a story kind of uh, storytelling, like uh, uh, it was a monologue. It was a monologue. I. I'm hearing voices from the eye, and, and it says, man, uh, have a look. I said, what do you see? And I see a plumb line, and bring that to my people, because through that plumb line, I'm going to show where they are wrong. So I brought that symbolically and so forth with, with uh, with uh, uh, exaggerated acting, of course, <laughs> stage life. Uh, Another version of a moral compass. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the moral compass. An engineer version. <laughs> I have a question about, I mean, it's really striking, you're like a totally different model, like how you, how you get eight passengers on a motorcycle, like that, that has been solved, you know, a bunch of different ways, and, it, and in the past it seemed like it spread kind of regionally, like all the ones in Davao look like this, all the ones in Cagayantora look like this, all the ones in Cebu look like this, but now are people using internet to share designs and ideas like that, like the same guy that has a, a little workshop making ten of those a month, is, is, he, is that person online, or are they just seeing immediately like their neighbors, you know, like how does that, how does that spread, how does that invention spread around the Philippines? Okay. The um, the thing is, Metro Manila is everyone's dream to go to Metro Manila. If you're from the rural, there's a migration. I mean, by the thousands. So if you're a a, a poor farmer, eventually your kid will will think of. Especially uh, they see how glamorous the the cities are, and so. There's a time in your life, if you're a young man, in your teens, you'll go to Manila. And you'll see a center of all these innovations. So when he goes back, that's how it gets uh, picked up and uh, shared. So, and, and one of the things that the purpose of going to Metro Manila is to learn a trade. Normally, you'd have a relative who could uh, for you and you can stay with them for free. That's the hospitality, the right. Filipino, mm -hmm. you know that. <coughs> and, and so that, that's how it gets spread. Uh, it's got to be started in the centers. And there are three centers. The Bawe is one uh, in the Mindanao. This, uh, Cebu is another and Metro Mini. So Filipinos are good at imitation. We are good copycats. You know? And sometimes we, we are good at copying the wrong thing. <coughs> so, like for instance, uh, it has really caught up with us you know, buying things, you know, consumerism. So, the, the lure of uh, uh, the West. Uh, I, I, I guess that's part of our heritage, which is, um, uh, uh, we are so pro-Western, and uh, we love to imitate the West. 
But I, this is an amazing playground for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> oh, amazing. I mean, uh, I was just, my friend was just telling me about uh, the water laser. Is it? You call it laser? Water, water, water jet. jet. Water, water jet. jet. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this, I saw gears cut out of the water jet. Yeah. Amazing. Should stay and play. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Ah. Oh, hi, everybody. Hello. I was Hello. waiting since 12 o'clock at the other D lab. Oh, oh. I burned the lines. <laughs> I in touch with the, his wife, his the daughter. Oh, is no. it the cancel? Where is it? I'm on the wrong venue. Where am I? Oh. It's 12 o'clock, Fred. I'm uh, sorry. Oh sorry, guys, to disturb you, Brian. It's okay. Oh, no, I didn't get an email. Oh, you're Hannah. I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> she is, uh, she is, uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's from Boston. Um, we, we started around 12.30. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was here since 12 uh, o'clock. Uh, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. She told her I'm... Um, I'm honored to give a talk at MIT and she wanted... I dropped everything for you. <laughs> <laughs> she just came from her... She's from Boston as well. Cambridge. Oh, okay. Cambridge. 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 A couple of blocks from here. Really. How about that? Harvard Street. Yay. Close to Central Square. Uh, I'm sorry I disturbed you, but no? okay. I walk. <laughs> passed this place, went to the main building, and said, oh, no, no. Uh, N51 is right back. So I went back again. That was 11.30, because oh, I did not want to miss you. You were oh, able to miss oh, earlier. No. <laughs> There's a reason for every season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> and this girl is the baby. <laughs> oh, we knew the young girls. Her friends from the Philippines, and now she's, uh, she's here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Well, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. 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 Making things red, uh, than than actually painting. So <laughs> this is like his um, people. I think you guys are his people. Establishment movement. It's still alive, but I think it's uh, the longest revolutionary um, group. The East. There is a very special value the Filipinos as a culture. Because we are very clannish, we have the spirit that he talks about called Bayanihan. They carry, they approve the house, everybody will be helping to transfer that entire building, entire house to relocate. That's key to Bayanihan. And it's so natural for us Filipinos to help one another. I, I mean, it's that spirit, I think, that has also given us a retrogression aspect in our modernization progress. I've just been from the Philippines after 15 years, because when my parents passed away, I did not realize that it meant so much for me to stay away because of what I feel as emptiness with my parents gone. At 15 years, I was so amazed 
with what organization I come out. Buildings powering my own neighborhood. I cannot even recognize. We're neighbors. I cannot even recognize my 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 area, my community. I get, oh, what was this before? What was this before? What was this before? Because it's entirely changed. But that I believe from what I learned lately, there are so many foreign investments and so many foreigners coming in. And the value that we knew of old. The, the sharing part. I mean, in the old days, before the coming of the Spaniards, the colonizers, there's the, the land was communal. It was owned by the tribe, so it shared. So the concept of private property is yes. new to us. And the Spaniards came and they had the title. We had the land, but they owned the, 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 the title. So, so it, was, it was beginning to erode. But the sense of community, the sharing of labor especially, is true. Uh, a house is, is, is uh, when, when there is taboo when the family gets sick, they relocate. And so they ask the neighbors to bear it towards another location, and that's payanihan, or sharing. Uh, literally, uh, bearing, uh, bearing the, the house on their shoulders, relocating. I know that Amy very much wanted, wished that she could be here. So Amy very much wished that she could be here. So I'm glad that she can hear you. So yeah, it'll be good. I think she'll be excited to see your presentation. Yay! So, so I, was just, I was just with her in India, and she was really hoping to be able to be here. Yay! Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully you'll be able to meet her at some point. Oh, nice. Um, if not today, maybe.